Okay, so the theme of today's class is um, moving the diamond. And I had mentioned it uh, a couple days ago when I taught my first class, and I really felt like I wanted to get this on video because it is such an important uh, con uh, concept. So we all know about fascia by now, right? Everybody knows fascia is like this like, interesting netting that covers us. It's connective tissue, just like your tendons and your ligaments are connective tissue, your fascia is. And it kind of what holds you in place. And as you get older, uh, and you don't move as much, it gets stiffer. So they did this study about low back pain, and they uh, analyzed um, hundreds of people, and they found that they did MRIs, couldn't find anything low back. X-rays couldn't find any problems with their low back. So they started to theorize that they thought it might be the fascia in the low back that's so tight that's constricting and causing pain. So they put people into three different control groups. Two of the three control groups uh, did exercise as movement. And the other one-third of the control group did not have any exercise. So the second control group did gymnastics, so I have no idea what they did. I don't know if they did headstands, handstands, back handsprings, I don't know, but they did gymnastics. And the third control group did yoga. So at the end of the findings, they realized that the two people, the two groups that improved were the people who did the exercise. And so gymnastics and yoga were equal in terms of relieving low back pain. So they thought, okay, so this is interesting because yoga and the meditation and the breathing really wasn't as beneficial as what was in common, stretching. So now what we're going to do is we're going to all be aware of stretching the diamond shape of our fascia in our low back. And can everybody see this is a diamond? This is an anatomical drawing right here of your muscles and your fascia. And that truly is a diamond shape. And so the, the you know, purpose of the study was to say that this area gets very, very tight, very, very dense, not pliable, and can cause a lot of low back pain. Pulling on the muscles, pulling on the structure of the bones and things like that. So when we do movements, I want everyone to um, be aware of when we're stretching the diamond. And we're going to be doing specific movements to stretch into that diamond. And hopefully you can start to feel some of that looseness and, and the relief of that. Okay, so we're going to start first by closing our eyes and settling in to our seated mountain pose. So you want your feet flat, and when you look over the edges of your knees, you should be able to see your toes. That means your knees and your ankles are nice and lined up, and your knees are parallel. Good. And then you're going to roll your shoulders up and back a couple times. Good. And then when you drop your shoulders, I want you to soften your face with your palms facing down on your laps. And then just create this beautiful moment where you're just going to check in to how you're feeling. How is your breath? How is your mind? How is your body feeling? Anything that you can just notice. First thing that comes into your mind. And then just noticing the breath as it comes in through the nose. Maybe flaring the nostrils just a little bit to feel like you're taking a bigger swoop of that breath in and exhaling out your nose. And then with your hands on your lap, we're going to take an inhale breath, and your fingers and hands are going to float up, maybe as high as your chest. Your hands are a little loose as you inhale upward. And then exhale, your wrists are soft and your fingers are soft, and you're going to exhale, and the palms are going to come back down to the lap. So you're going to inhale, flow up, get tall with the breath. Exhale, soften, and release with the breath. And a few times like that, inhaling up. So it's slow, slow and gentle and soft, just like your breath. Just letting that beautiful rhythm of the elbows and the wrists and the fingers moving with the breath. Keeping your eyes closed. Now the palms are going to face each other and you're going to inhale, open the arms out a little wider so you can feel the expansiveness of the breath. And then exhale, draw the palms in a little bit closer towards each other. Inhale, opening up, and use those wrists and the fingers just softly, like moving them like they're flowing through water. And then inhale, opening up. And then exhale, drawing them back together. Bringing the hands back on your laps. Take a nice deep breath so you're tall in your spine. And exhale, slowly letting the chin drop. So as you're taking a pause here, just take a, 
a notice of what your neck's feeling like, where it's tight. Remember, we're being mindfully aware, right? So that means we're paying attention. We're using our brains and our senses to sense what we're feeling in our bodies. So drop one shoulder down a little lower than the other, so you should be pulling a little bit on the side of the neck, and then bring that shoulder back to neutral, and then the other side, back down and back to neutral. And then a few times, just pulsing down, back up to neutral, and down, and back up to neutral. Good. Next time you're back to neutral, we'll slowly move the head to the right, so the right ear is going to go towards the right shoulder. And you're going to take your left hand and scoot it behind you, so the palm is open to the back. And as much as you can, just slip it behind you. It doesn't have to go really far back behind there, just a little bit. So we're going to open up the shoulder, and we're going to slowly move our head to the uh, right. So moving your head as if you're looking underneath your right armpit or down towards the floor, your eyes open or closed. And then you're going to inhale, bring your ear back towards your shoulder. And then exhale, move it again towards the right. And then inhale back. And last time, exhale back towards the floor or towards the armpit. And take a nice deep, long breath here. Oh, that's the levator scapula we're stretching. That's the muscle that lifts your shoulders up and hunches you. So that stretch should feel nice. And then bring your ear back to your shoulder. Lift your head up. Take your arm away. And then just sit up nice and tall. And I bet you you're leaning a little bit sideways. So we just opened up that whole left side of us. Now we'll take it to the other side. So chin down. Roll it off to the left, so left ear, left shoulder. Now the right arm swoops behind you, so remember the palm is open to the back of you. Dropping that right shoulder, take a breath and exhale, turn your head. So gently moving with your breath, that's the exhale. Inhale, you're going back ear to shoulder. Exhale, you're turning again. Inhale back to the center. And last time, you're going to exhale, you're going to tuck your chin down, and you're going to take a nice deep breath here. So inhale, breath. Exhale, release. Lift your head up, release your arms. And when your hands are back to your lap, tuck your chin all the way back to the center. Good. Interlace your hands behind your head. Give a little thumb rub right below your skull. So round and round into that nice rounded part of your skull. There's fascia right up here, you guys. And this gets tight. This is the fascia that connects your neck muscles to your skull, so we're loosening that up. And then keeping your hands there, we're going to open the eyes and then lift our head up. So if you can, open up nice and wide. Good. Oh, so you feel good posture right there. Good. Reach the arms all the way out. Open and close the fingers. Good. Hi, Anne. Yay. And turn the palms up. Open and close. Good. And then release all the way down. And then roll the shoulders up and back. Good. Okay, so we're going to do one more little shoulder um, opener. Let's take that uh, left hand behind us like we did before. And now I want you to pretend like it's like a seesaw. So I want you to go in a little bit and then out a little bit. Yeah, in a little bit. Where are you feeling it? Mindful awareness. Where are you feeling it, you guys? Tell me. Shoulder. What part of the shoulder, though? Front shoulder, back shoulder. Right in here. Okay, these are the pectoral muscles we're stretching. Also, your shoulder blade on the back side of you is kind of popping out a little bit, should be, right? So that's a little bit of shoulder mobility you want to feel, and your rhomboids are working when you're doing that. So these are the two muscles that we want to work when we get good shoulder mobility. Now, other side. And then we take it and we just slide it in and out. So that sliding motion is important, right? That, that makes sure that you're never going to have a frozen shoulder if you can do this movement. Good. Good. Okay. So the other one is going to be the left hand up, and we're going to pat ourselves on the back. So we're going to take our fingers right into the back and just give yourself a little pat. What are you feeling? Do you feel it right here? Right here? Tricep muscle. Yeah. Good. And we'll do the other one up here. And then pat yourself on the back over there. Good. Good. And then bring it all the way back. Very good. Now bring both hands to the center. So now we're going to work the biceps and the triceps. So this is namaste hands. You're going to drop your shoulders, but lift your elbows. Yeah. So there's a little bit of effort here. We're going to push the palms over to the right. And as we do, we're creating a little tension in those bones, which is good because that strengthens them. And then move your head to the left. So it's the opposite way. Take a breath here. 
Good. Slowly bringing your hands to the center, your head to the center. We're going to push it over to the left with the palms, and then the head turns to the right, keeping those elbows up if you can, strengthening the arm muscles. Good. When we come back to the center, we're going to touch the thumbs to the heart. The fingertips twirl down towards the floor. Good. Then they come up, and we're going to roll them inward. So we're just working wrist mobility now. And then interlace your hands. Oh, there's so much popping and clicking on that one, huh? Okay, here we go. Stretch it out. Oh, yeah. Reach it up. Big reach. Good. And then release it. We're going to do it again. So we're going to start the other side. So namaste hands is for bone strength and muscle strength. So we're going to drop the shoulders and lift the elbows. Yeah. Push over now to the left and turn your head to the right. So I like to do this little asymmetrical thing because it really stretches neck and shoulders in an interesting way. Good. Push it back. Head is back to the center. Here we go to the other side, and then we're going to move the head to the left. Keep pushing, because the more you push, the stronger those bones want to get. Good. When you come back to the center, head and palms. Touch the thumbs. Twirl the fingers down. That's your carpal tunnel you're looking at right there. Good. Bring the hands up. Twirl them inward, and now it'll be the opposite way. So the other pinky's on the top, so it feels awkward. Right? And then stretch it out. Reach it up. Good, and then release it all the way down. Good, and then roll the shoulders. Good. So now we're going to do a little uh, sideways stretch. We're going to take it into rainbow. So if you can scoot up with a little wider stance, we're going to take the left hand and make a hitchhiker thumb, everybody, and place it on the opposite knee. And you're going to hold on to the chair just for support so you can, don't feel like you're going to topple sideways. We're going to go in a rainbow arc one finger at a time. So we're going to start with the index finger, and we're going to go one, two, three, four. Looking at the hand the whole time, bring it all the way back. Keep the palm open. Turn your head now to the right and nod twice. Once and twice. Looking back at the hand, we're going to bring it back to the pinky first. So here we go. Four, three, two, one. When the knuckle touches the knee, again, I want you to tuck your chin and round your shoulders so the upper back stretches. Good. Now we're going to do it again. So it's one, two, Three, four, big arc, open up that inner elbow, turn your head to the right, nod twice. Notice those muscles you're stretching when you do that. Look back at the hand, and we're going back in, pinky first. Four, three, two, one, knuckle down, chin down. Oh, yeah. Here we go, other side. Hitchhiker thumb to the left knee. Holding on with the right uh, left hand. One, two. Three, four, big arc, so you can feel that stretch into the shoulder. Good. Keep it there. Turn your head. Nod twice. Down and up. Down and up. Looking back at the hand, we're going back in. Four, three, two, one. All the way down and tuck the chin. And last time, one, two, three, four, big arc. Turn your head. Nod twice. Yes, yes, yes. Look back at the hand, and here we go, back in. Four, three, two, and one. Tuck it down. Good. Coming back to the center. So I want you to keep your legs like this, because now we're going to start to stretch the diamond. This is where I really want you to pay attention to this movement. So we saw how the diamond is shaped, right? It's called the thoracic lumbar fascia, because it starts at the thoracic spine right here on the top, into the diamond and down at the bottom. So when we do cat-cow, we're stretching the top and the bottom of the diamond, right? So we're stretching and we're tugging and we're pulling at that. And when we hunch, we're making it long, 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 stretching it. And see if you can feel that. Feel how you're stretching that area. As much as you can take a nice uh, hunch to the low back, you're going to get a little deeper there. Good. And now in order to get the side of the diamond, that's the harder one. Okay, so there's just a couple of movements that really gets the side, and these are the important ones for low back pain. We're going to take the left shoulder towards the right knee. So everybody do that. Now once you, do you feel that stretch? Right? It's on the back side of your left hip. Then you're going to swoop in the front. Your shoulders are going to squeeze together. Your heart is open. And then you're going to crisscross the other way. So it's right shoulder over towards the left knee. So you're rolling that shoulder forward and stretching the back of your hip. And then you're going to tuck back. So you're going to tuck your chin, round your shoulders a little bit. So we're going to stretch the diamonds up and down. And then we're going to crisscross again. So you can kind of go into four points. If you can kind of think about that diamond, we're hitting those four points when we're doing that. And then once you kind of feel that, you want to go into a circle. 
So this is called stirring the pot. And I love that analogy because if you really want to get all the edges of the, the pot, you've got to go slow and wide, wide around the edges. And if you get some tight spots, oh yeah, that's what you want to feel, the tight spots. And maybe if you want to, you can stop there and just feel it like, oh, okay, I feel that. I'm taking a breath in there. And continue with the circle one more time. Good. And then just go the other way. So remember, slow is always better. If it ever feels good to close your eyes and you feel stable with your eyes closed, feel free to do that because it gives you a little bit more of that inward awareness. So you just really want to feel like you're stretching all that diamond and all of its little points and all of its little angles. Good. And last circle. And when you come back to the center, let's do a couple cat cows here. So we're going to go up like that and then down like that. And up like that. You really feel that, huh? Did that feel good? Everybody feel the diamond stretch on that one? Really important. So these things are easy for you to do every single day. It's going to make your low back feel so much better. So here's the other one. Here's the other one that gets the side of the diamonds. Because getting the top and the, and the bottom of the diamond is easy. We do that a lot with our cat cows. But the sides of the diamond are a little more challenging. Uh, right hand down, left hand reaches across. It's that same idea of reaching across, but now it's a circle. So you take a big circle and you get your shoulder to move. And feel free to move, you know, bend the elbow. You're going to run into that left knee undoubtedly, but don't worry about that. The movement is that long stretch across the left side of your hip, that edge of your diamond. Good. And then we'll come back up, and then it'll be the left hand down. The right arm reaches across to get that stretch. You know exactly what that stretch feels like now. And then you massage into it with the circle. Right, so any movement like this creates circulation, and that's what we want to do. We want to loosen up that fascia. We want to lubricate it. Good. And when you come back, we're going to come all the way back, and then we're going to do a couple cat cows, because that's going to get both sides equal again. So cat cow like this, cat cow like that. Good. One more time. Good. And then when you come back to the center, let's walk our feet back to neutral. Okay. Sit back, close your eyes just for a moment. Maybe you feel a little bit more warmth or looseness back there. I just want you to notice a difference. So we were meeting together as um, some yoga teachers this week, and we talked about what's the difference between yoga and exercise. And we said, we said those terms, mindful awareness. You're just being really aware of what's going on in your body and all those sensations. A lot of times when you're doing exercise, you're just kind of doing things 15, 14, 13, 12, right? So we're really paying attention when we do our yoga practice. So we're going to take it into um, the sideways. So we're going to open up the side. So there's this interesting muscle called the QL muscle and attaches on your hip bone to the bottom of your ribs. And it gets tight. It gets tight when we do this, right? You can imagine, there's not much space between your ribs and, and your hip bone right now. So how do we stretch that? What do you think, you guys? How do we stretch the space? Sideways, lateral bends. Do we do a sideways stretch most of the time in life? We don't, right? We don't do that very often. So that's why, that's why this one's really good. This one's good and it's safe for shoulders too. So let's take the left hand to the shoulder, okay? So the left elbow is going to go down and try to touch the left hip so you're contracting that side, right? And then you're going to lift it up and you're going to lean into the right arm and bend it. And when you're leaning, you're lifting that elbow up as far as it feels comfortable. That's stretching your QL muscle. Good. Here we go. Now we're going to watch the breath. So we're going to inhale, touch the elbow down. Exhale, lift it up and deepen that if you want to sideways. Good. Two more. Inhale, we're going to contract it. Exhale, we're going to lift up and then stretch it. Good. Good, and then last one. Inhale, contract that side. Exhale, lift up, and we're gonna hold it this time. So this is an option. You can keep it here. You can put your left hand on your head, which creates just that little bit of support there, or you can take your left arm and really reach it and get into that space. Take one big breath, you guys. Exhale, come all the way back up. Good, and then we'll go the other side. So now it's to the left. Hand holding on, the right hand to the elbow, or to the shoulder, and we're going to inhale, contract, exhale, lift, bending that left elbow, we're leaning. Good. The breath is important on this one, so watch that. Now, inhale, contract, exhale, up, 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 and really open up that space. 
and two more. So inhale, contract, exhale, lift. And last time we're gonna hold it. So inhale, we're gonna scrunch up that muscle, contract it. Exhale, we're gonna lift it up, we're gonna stretch it, hold it, and you know you can keep it right here. Hand to the head, a little kind of pressure there, or that full arm extension, and you really feel the ribs opening, good. Take a breath. Exhale, lift all the way up. Very good, come back, and then let's roll the shoulders up and back. Good. All right, good, and then up and forward the other way. Okay, so we're gonna do something called the shoulder plug-in. I like this one because it reminds us of our posture. Okay, so everybody, we're gonna do the slump first, which is this, this. Really slump. Even put your hands in the front and go like that. Yeah. Does that feel good? It feels so lazy, doesn't it? You see people sometimes sitting like that. It just feels so darn good. It's the worst thing for you, though. The worst. Okay. So what's happening is your shoulder blades, those two little wings on the back of you, they just rolled up and forward in your spine. So we're going to find the right place for them. So when you're like this in cactus arms, you're sitting up at tall, and you're going to bring your arms up. So they're up a little bit higher. So you just have raised your shoulder blades up, right? You can feel it now. Mindful awareness, everybody. We're going to take the arms back just a wee bit, and we're going to slowly lower our elbows to our waist. And I want you to notice your shoulder blades, those two little wing things in the back. Notice what's happening to them. They're sliding down, aren't they? They're sliding really far down. They slide all the way down. How far can you get them down? Keep going much as you can until your elbows stop. Now take your hands out in front with your elbows tucked in, your hands to your lap. How's your posture now? Sweet, huh? That's magic. So when you're at your computer or any time you're sitting, just kind of think about that. It's the same movement of doing this a little bit, but to me, I feel like doing this really makes you feel how those shoulder blades really want to go down in your back. They don't want to go up on your back, okay? So when we do this, we can reach better. So let's do the slump again, our favorite. Take the left arm out in front with the palm facing in and reach your arm up as high as you can comfortably. Okay, look at that range of motion. Okay, here we go. We're going to sit up. We're going to take those shoulders up, roll the shoulder blades down and back so we're tall again. Now lift that arm all the way up. See how much further we can go? And we're safer. That's how we can tear a rotator cuff if we're, we're in bad alignment and we're reaching. Good. Now let's do the other arm. It's going to be the right arm with the palm up. Good. So alignment's really important for just keeping all of our joints healthy. Let's do one more time. And then we'll add the legs. Good. And then up. Good. Now it's going to be the left hand and the right leg. And the right leg is going to straighten up with the toes facing up. I love it when people have to pause. They go, okay. <laughs> Good, come back. Here we go. Right hand, left foot. Remember, we're kicking the toes up because we want to stretch the back of the legs. Good. And then we're going to go the opposite. Good. And we're just going to go with the flow. So this is like seated marching, right? And you can feel it. What muscles are you using in your legs, you guys? Yes, exactly. Those quadriceps are working. Even your hip flexors, too, a little bit. Good. Okay, when we come down, we're going to do both arms up. So nice, tall spine. Perfect. Coming down, hold on to the chair because both legs are coming up. Toes are up. Good. And then we're going to come up with both. So both arms, both legs lift up and hold. This isn't downward facing dog upside down. <laughs> Basically, right? Good. And come all the way down. Good. And then go like this. Okay, so who got a little warmer? Why did we get warm again? We're moving the big muscles of our bodies. They burn more energy. That's why we get all hot and bothered. So anybody want fans? Joy, okay, Joy's, okay, oh, that Joy, I forgot I had two Joys. Oh, good, there, there is a lot of Joy in this room, how nice is that? Okay, so before we do our really hot and bothered routine, which is our sun salutations, we'll do teeny little things, okay? So let's do, um, let's do how much money, honey? Yeah, more, faster on this one. Diane, can you press the purple button over there? Yeah, they're hot-blooded ladies over there. And Carl's with the hot-blooded ladies over there. Yay, Carl. <laughs> okay, so 
A trick we do as yoga teachers is when we do get you a little bit hot and bothered and, and moving you a lot, we try to go to little movements because that helps you cool down. Okay, so the little movement is going to be how much money, honey, and this is for your math uh, capabilities. Okay, <laughs> so here we go. I know, exactly. We've got a couple of accountants in the room. Yes. Okay, so what, what the concept is, is that we're going to be using fine motor skills. So we're pinching one finger at a time, starting with the index finger, then the middle, okay, so one at a time. And we're, we're pretending we're picking up coins. So even think about that concept of picking up a coin, and we're going to pick up nickels first. Here we go. One nickel, two nickels, three nickels, and four nickels. And how much money did we pick up? Good. No, you guys are good. Okay, over here. Kennedy half dollars. Here we go. And now you've got to pinch harder because they're heavier, right? Okay, here we go. There's one half dollar, two half dollars, three half dollars, and four half dollars. How much money in this hand? $2. Plus? $2.20. Okay, now we're picking up quarters. Here we go, both hands. Two quarters, another two quarters, another two quarters, and another two quarters. How many quarters? How much dollars of quarters? Wait. All right, we're going back to second grade math here, everybody. Eight quarters is plus, what did we have before? How much do we have together? All right, good. I don't know, there was a, I know. I think we got a B minus on that one. Okay, but we passed. Okay, we passed. All right, we got our money. Okay, so here we go. We're going to go into sun salutation. So we're, we're going to remind ourselves we're in that seated mountain, right? So you're looking over your toes. Make sure they're facing forward. They're flat. They're solid. Good. So that's mountain for you. And then bring your hands to your heart. On your inhale, we're going to swoop up all the way. Good. On the exhale, we're into cactus arms. The elbows are in line with the shoulders if you can. Take a breath and exhale halfway down. It's like we're peeking over the edge of something. You should see your toes. Take a breath. Exhale, hands and kneecaps. And you know this is a forward fold, so you can stay here or you can slide down a little bit. You can keep your head up if you tend to get dizzy. Inhale halfway up now. The hands go to your kneecaps and you're going to roll your chest open. Good. Exhale, you're going to take your bend. Inhale, the, just the right arm is going to reach out to the side. You can look at the thumb. Good. Exhale, lower it. And then inhale the left arm out to the side. Good. And exhale, lower it. Now draw the belly button in so you're strong in your core. And we're going to inhale all the way up. Big stretch. Turn your hands back to back and exhale back to your heart center. Good, you guys. Now we're going to watch how the breath and the body move together like a dance. Inhale up. Exhale halfway down and hold that. Take your big breath. Exhale, hands to kneecap, and we're going to fold. Inhale, halfway up, squeeze your shoulder blades. Remember that sensation? Good. Exhale, we're going to fold. The right arm's going to reach up, so you can't, if you can't take it all the way up, just go where it feels good. Exhale, down, and then it's the, inhale, the left arm is up. Good. Exhale, down. The belly draws in. The arms go out. That's the hardest part. That's a lot of core strength. Good. And then exhale back to the heart center. Nice big sun circles, painting the sun, inhaling up. Exhaling halfway down, so the core's got to be strong right here. You're suspended. Take a breath. Exhale, we're gliding down. <sighs> Inhale, lengthen halfway. Open up the throat a little bit. Yeah. Exhale, fold. Inhale, the right arm's reaching up, gazing up. Exhale, lower. And then inhale, the left arm all the way up. And exhale, release it. Last time, we're going to swoop on up, and then we'll add some things to it. Good. Exhale, back to the heart center. So we'll add a twist this time. So inhale, we're lifting. Exhale, we'll go halfway down for that strong hold. Take your breath, looking at your toes. Exhale, bring your hands to your kneecaps and folding down where it feels good. We're stretching the diamond, right? Everybody should feel that. Inhale, halfway up, little stretch, good. Exhale, we're folding. The right arm is reaching up and your fingers are spread nice and wide. Good, exhale, lower it. And then inhale, the left arm up. Good, exhale, lower. Inhale, both arms are reaching up. Are you touching your neighbor over there? Exhale, bring your arms out to the side. You'll probably touch your neighbor on this one. So we're going to exhale and twist on the left. So take a breath and exhale, little windmill over to the left. Good, straight spine, inhale, center. Exhale to the right. Good, inhale, center. Exhale to the heart. Good, then we're going to add a little tilt. So inhale, we're up. Exhale, we'll go halfway down. Hold that belly in tight. Take your breath. Exhale, glide on down, soften the shoulders. Inhale, halfway up, open up the heart. 
Good. Exhale, take that fold. The right arm is coming up. The elbow's nice and straight. Exhale, lower it. And then inhale, the left arm up. Good. And exhale, lower it. Inhale, both arms all the way up. Good. Exhale to cactus. And then we're going to tilt to the left on the exhale. So take a breath. Exhale, tilt. Inhale, up. Exhale, tilt. Inhale, up. Exhale to the heart. Good. Now the feet are going to be involved. So inhale, we'll up. Exhale that halfway down. That's your core and your back muscles really strong. Take a breath. Exhale, slide on down, stretch into the low back. Inhale, halfway up, squeezing the shoulders back. Good. Exhale, take your fold. Right arm is reaching up. You're looking up at the thumb. Exhale, lower. And inhale, the left arm up. Good. Exhale, lower. Then we're going to bring the arms out in front. So if you lean forward just a little bit, there's a little bit more core work involved in that. Then the toes are down and the heels are up. And we're pressing. So you feel the butt muscles kind of engage. Good. Burn calories and then losing weight if you want to do it that way, right? But it keeps your digestive system going, so that's why we want to feel this way, even though it's irritating sometimes, okay? So close your eyes, and I want you to absorb this, this energy that we've created in our beautiful bodies on the inside, uh, not just in the muscles and the bones, right, but into all the organs, the heart and the lungs and the digestive system, your lymphatic system. And we're going to open our eyes and come to standing. So everybody come on up and we're going to do downward facing dog. So when you're at the back of your chair, I want you to walk back, watch your neighbor though. Go back, go back, go back. And then start to stretch in your arms, in your shoulders, in your armpits, the back of your legs. Bend your knees so you don't overstretch those hamstrings. And I just want you to feel the length in your spine. That's really where I want you to notice it. Now, I know some of you have sensitive shoulders, so don't, you don't have to go really far back and pulling on the shoulders. But I want you to pull your hips back so you get the length in your back. Think about that diamond right now, right? We're stretching the top and the bottom of it. Now, there's a concept here in Downward Facing Dog of walking the dog, which means bending one knee and the heel is up when you're bending that knee. And then you put the heel down, and then you bend the other knee, and the heel is up, and you're going back and forth walking the dog. Okay, so if you've got that pattern, then you add a little twist into your hips, and that's when you'll get the outside edges of your diamond to stretch. So feeling that back and forth, stretching sideways a little bit into the hip and the low back. Feel that stretch. It should feel so good. Make sure you can breathe, right? So if you're not breathing, you're not stretching into that Good, and then when you come back to neutral, look at your hands, and we're going to walk all the way up, and we're going to do upward facing dogs. So you're going to be standing on your tippy toes, and then lifting your heart open. Maybe your head lifts up, and if your head is up just a little bit, open and close your mouth. Move into the jaw. Good. Stimulates the thyroid gland. Good, and then coming back down to your heels and lift your toes up. And again, if you can, flare your toes. Really stretch those calves. Good, we're going to go one more time. Coming up on the tippy toes, now the right arm's going to come all the way up. So this is like a nice little back bend. This is locust pose standing. Good, come all the way down. Rock to your heels, toes are up. And last time, we're going to take the left arm all the way up, palms facing in, nice shoulder support, good. Come all the way back down. Rock to your heels to let go of those tight calf muscles, good. And then come back to neutral, take one leg out and shake it, another leg out and shake it. Good. Okay, so a little cat cow standing. So we know cat cow is really, really good for the spine. Let's try to see if we can stretch a little bit lower here. So take the hands to the chair. We're going to take a little back bend. The feet are flat. And then we're going to exhale, bend the knees, round the back, and try to stretch the low back. Okay, so that means maybe the hips hinge a little bit more and the knees bend. And then we're going to inhale, come up, a little back arch. And exhale, we're going to stretch down into that. Good. And then again, inhale, coming up. Good. And exhale, coming down. Good. Next time you're back up, we're going to bring the right arm out in front with the palm facing in. Spread your fingers so the palm is facing in. Yeah, that's it. And the left foot back behind you. Good. So this is called sunbird pose. Very good. Come back in. Other side. Left hand, right foot. Find your balance. Beautiful. Coming back in. Now we're going to do it with our breath. 
So this is coordination. Inhale, right hand, left foot. Exhale, lower. Inhale, opposite. Exhale, lower. Good. Inhale, up. Exhale, lower. And inhale, up. And exhale, lower. Good. Now we're going to stretch the low back. Okay, so I want everybody to do that rounded hunch. Bend your knees and bend at your hips. Really stretch that low back. And then we're going to do something called wag the tail. So I want you to move your hips side to side and maybe look behind you on each side. Just so that you're going to stretch that little diamond, the sides of the diamond. That's what you want to feel, all that little muscle stretching there. Good. Coming all the way back to the center. And now everybody march it out. March like this. Okay. That's also a real good stretch for your low back. Because marching like this stretches all back in here. Okay. So now we're going to get into the hips a little bit. The right foot's going to go out. We're going to bend the knee, take it out to the side. The foot is flexed, right? And then we're going to go hip circles around and around, getting into the joints. Good. And then the other way, round and round. And then we're going to go up and down a couple times, up and down. Good. Next time we're out, we're going to hold it out with the toes facing forward. And I know that's really challenging, toes facing forward. I, Aye, 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 right? That one you really get. You feel that right here. Good. Bring it back in. Here we go. Other side. Left foot out. Foot is flexed. Knee is bent. And we go round and round into the hip. So we're getting synovial fluid in there. Keeps the hip nice and flexible and mobile. And go the other way. Round and round. And then up and down a couple times. Up and down. And then next time we're out, we're going to straighten the leg. Toes facing forward. Holding that, that's your gluteus medius and minimus muscle. Good, bring it back in. Now, a little skiing. Oh, yeah, that feels really super good. Good. All right, and one more time. Good. All right, so now we're going to do the dragon swim. So that's a multi-directional movement for the upper and the lower body. So it's a little bit of balancing. I want you to be careful, okay? So everybody bring their hands to the heart. So if you're feeling pretty balanced in that, we're going to make a figure eight. And I'll turn towards you. So the fingertips are going to be going up on the figure eight, up and around, and they go down and around. Right? So when you're making that figure eight. And the idea of this one is to lubricate your joints in a very organic way. Yeah. Like you're a dragon and you're slithering around, right? Okay, so then go the other way. Find your opposite brain to work, right? And then when you can, or if you can, you get the body to kind of move with that slither, right? Just round and round. It's like a dragon's tail that just goes round and round. Good. Coming all the way back to the center. Very good. And then shake it out. Woo. And shake it out. Now we're going to do a standing pose to, for our strength and our stability. It's going to be warrior. So to the back of the chair, right foot's going to stay, left foot's going to step back. Two, three, four feet. It just depends on where your stance feels most uh, comfortable. You're going to bend your right knee and then look down. Make sure you see your big toe. The knee, we don't want the knee to go in and we don't want the knee to go out. So the knee is straight through that second and third toe. Good. Now the left arm is going to reach up. So that is stretching your psoas muscle. Your hip flexor gets tight when you sit a lot. So that's why we got to open this area up. So we're going to take a little twist. So take a breath and exhale. We're going to go over to that uh, right side. Good. Inhale, come back up. Bring your hand to your hip. Turn and look over your left shoulder. Your right knee still facing forward. Turn and open up. Stretch that hip a little bit. Good. Come back to the center. And then holding on with the right hand, turn and look over the right shoulder. Good. A little twist that way. Good. Coming back. And now the... Left hand's coming up again, and maybe the right hand. Otherwise, just keep holding on. Maybe both arms, doesn't matter. We're building bone strength right now. Good. Then bringing that hand down and the other foot forward, and maybe a little shake out. Okay. Good. Okay, so here we go. The legs are going to be parallel. The left foot will stay. The right foot will step back. Both hands are on the chair, so that means your hips are facing forward. Bend your knee. Double check. Make sure you see your big toe and your knee is straight. Everybody feel a little pull right here already? So as soon as you take that right arm up, the palm is facing in, you're stretching that muscle. Good. Good. And then we're going to take a breath and we're going to lean to the left. So take a breath. Exhale, lean to the left. Open up that side. Good. Inhale, back to the center. 
Bring your hands to your hip, or your right hand to your hip, and you're going to turn and look behind you, but keep that left knee straight. It's going to want to go in. Good. Come back to the center. And then the counter twist would just be looking over the left shoulder just a little bit. Good. Coming back in. Now, right arm up, full Virabhadrasana 1, so you feel free to stay here or both arms up. You decide where you want to go with balance today. Good, you guys. Yay, look at you, Jim. Coming all the way down. Bring your leg in and do a little shake, a little shake. Oh, how about ski? I love skiing. It just feels so good to stretch those muscles. Feel free to get like a little bending over and a little twisting and going all around in that area, right? We're just trying to get lots of circulation in that low back. Good. And then a couple marches, a couple marches. And then we're going to take it into tree. So our last standing pose will be a one-legged balance for five breaths. So let's say right foot down first, left foot comes up. Instep, calf. Either of those two options. Spine is tall, right? Shoulder blade should feel down on your spine. And now let's reach one arm up. And you can do whatever you want with that arm, right? You can make it look like a craggly old kind of branch if you want to, right? You can create this beautiful mudra that, you know, you know, and this does a lot. And wherever you want to be with that branch. And then if you're feeling okay and you want to experiment, you can take the other hand and just do anything you want to do with it. Tree has so many different shapes. You could even move if you think it's a little windy here. And you can play with the balance, just taking your time. One last breath. And then you're down. Good. Shake it out a little bit. Okay, so to the other side. So left foot down, right foot up. You never want to feel like you're caving in on that hip, right? So you want to make sure that you're nice and strong. It's like you're a bean pole right here. Everything's strong and straight. One arm up or in any shape, again, that you want to. You could even just take it out to the side. All you want to do is feeling tall and solid. And of course, if you're moving a little bit, that's normal because a tree will move in the breeze. So feel free to... Take it any way you want to. Building bone strength right now. Your DEXA scores will be better if you do these poses. Coming all the way back down. Good. And then shaking it out. All right. So back down to the mat. Or to the mat, to the chair. <laughs> so used to saying the mat, huh? Coming all the way back down. Grabbing your belts, but taking a little pause. Remember that little mindful awareness pause. Oh, I do need a belt. Joy, thank you, my dear. Thank you. Okay. Do we have another belt for Sandy? Sandy D. Here we go. Oh, you have one. Okay, good. Okay. Somebody needs one. All right, you guys. Let's close our eyes for a moment before we kind of get into this one. Maybe sitting back, taking a pause, just maybe noticing any part of you that has changed in the last 45 minutes or so. Maybe, first of all, your thoughts, what you were thinking about when you first came in or were driving over here. If that, you've been freed from that. <clears throat> maybe notice your breath. If it's a little deeper, a little bit more comfortable, your temperature of your body. Anything that feels looser in your body, more spacious, uh, then gently open your eyes. Good. And then let's take the belt across the ball of the <clears throat> right foot. So you scoot up a little bit because we do move our hips a little, so you don't want to feel like your hips are planted into the chair. You want to feel like they can move around. So as you extend that right leg straight out, you're going to flex the foot, straighten the knee, and grab a hold of the belt. Okay. So this one, we're going to work with the uh, mechanics of the knee joint. So I want everybody to look right now at your leg. Hip bone, knee, ankle, and toes all in the same alignment. Bend your knee. Then straighten it. Are you staying in the same alignment? Right? Everything's nice and straight. So when we walk, this is what our gait is like, right? So we want to make sure that the knee and the ankle and the toes are always lined up. Sometimes that foot wants to go off to the side, so we're just being mindful of that alignment here. Next time the leg is straight, I want you to hold it straight and notice what's going on with your shoulders. Make sure those shoulder blades are down in your back. We, remember we know that feeling of this? I want you to feel that feeling of down in the back, so keeping that posture straight, good. 
And then what about that standing leg? Is it firm on the floor or is it cattywampus? Good. Now grab the belt. Right hand, left hand is out. You're still tall with your spine. We're going to open up. Keep the toes facing up. They're going to want to go out. Keep them facing up. Turn and look at your thumb. Good. And then coming back to the center, grabbing the belt now with the left hand. The right hand goes out, and we're just crisscrossing just that little, little bit. Good. Coming back to the center, and now we're going to come into seated pigeon. So ankle to the left knee. Belt across your lap, but the top foot is going to be flexed. And at this moment, we're going to give ourselves a little foot rub, okay? So just getting into that nice arch of your foot, the plantar fascia, stroking that in there. And then the toe mounds, a little massage into those areas. Then down along your baby toe, all the way down to the outside edge of your foot is your spine. So we want to keep that spine nice and healthy, a little love attention there. And then get into the toe creases by bending the, all of your five toes, all of them. Sometimes a big toe doesn't want to bend as much, so just take your time to kind of bend into that. And then we're going to do ankle rolls, but we're going to use our hands to do that. So one hand holds on, and the other one rolls that ankle around and around. Good. Anybody hear any popping and clicking? I do. I definitely do. Is that SMA, Deborah? when we hear that? The SMA a little bit? Yeah, good. SMA is sensory motor amnesia. That means the, the body forgot how the body forgot how to move into a certain part of our, bo our, our body. Basically, we forgot. So we're reminding the body how we need to move naturally. Good. So when you come back, we're going to take the right knee in and hold it. We're going to bring the arms in cactus, and we're going to do a couple little kicks just like that. Yeah. So that gets the quads and the hamstrings to fire. Good. Strengthens the knee. Good. Coming down, maybe a little shake like that. Okay, so let's take it to the other side. Okay. Belt across the ball of the left foot, and here we're checking alignment first. So when we've got the, um, the belt in our hands, we're going to drop the shoulders a little bit, and then you're just looking. Hip bone, knee bone, ankle bone, toes. Everything lined up, everything straight, like a pillar, right? But as soon as we bend the knee, right? That's when we notice our alignment. Then we notice, because I notice that my one foot goes out just a wee bit when I do that. And I'm working really hard to get those toes to be straight up in the sky. Good, because this is how we walk. Next time your leg is straight, we're going to hold it. Remember, the shoulders are dropped. Yeah, good. The bottom foot is planted, so don't be on the tippy toes. Yeah, you guys got it. And now grab the belt with the left hand, and the right hand goes out. And we're going to open up, toes facing upward, gaze going to the right. right. And then back to the center, other way, grabbing the belt with the right hand, left hand is out. Oh yeah, that's a good stretch for the outside edges of your leg. Are you guys hitting each other over there in the corner? Gosh, coming back. Yes. Well, that's the... That's the, I was going to say the dunce's corner. Gosh. Okay, coming back. Okay, belt down on the floor. Foot is slightly flexed so you can kind of feel that nice little sinewy part of your plantar fascia. Give that a little rub. The toe mounds a little rub. Anywhere where it feels like it needs some little tension, if it's tender, be careful. And then, of course, you got to go on the, along the pinky side all the way down your spine. Mm hmm What part? Right here. Oh, in there. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Really got into that area, didn't it? Yeah. And then get the creases of your toes. I know. Sometimes we got to stretch into those tight, tight areas. And at first you're like, whoa, your body's like, man, I haven't felt that one in a long time, huh? Good. And then we'll do the ankle rolls. And you might notice one ankle being a little looser than the other. All normal. Yeah, snap, crackle, pop, and then around and around. Good, and around and around. Okay. And then we're going to grab that left leg, and then we'll bring it into cactus, and then we'll do a couple kicks. Yeah. Oh, those are good for the knees. Good, and coming back, and a little shake. Okay, so I wanted to do this when we stood up, so we're going to end with shaky, shaky. Okay? 
Some of you, I've done this before. I just learned it from one of my teachers, and it's so cool. it's a cool concept, and it's kind of a fun thing to do. So everybody, this is our last pose. We're going to stand up, and we're going to shake. Okay, so that means we're doing this. Okay, this is for our lymphatic system. Okay, so we're shaking everything all about. Okay, so the lymph nodes are underneath your armpits. They're in your groin, so bend a little bit there, good. And then the organs, oh my gosh, they're shaking all about in there, aren't they? Oh yeah, the liver and the gallbladder, and it's like, oh. And then we do one thing more, we're gonna do the voice. Ah. All right, good. Do you feel that? It's like, whoa, right? We just shook everything up, yes. All right, so Shavasana time, 10 minutes, everybody, so come on down.